to New World Next Year. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com, welcoming you to our annual look at what really happened last year and what might be coming soon in the next year. So the only catch on this episode is that neither of us knows what the other one's going to talk about. And, of course, we clean up just a little bit for the occasion. So Media Monarchy's prediction for 2017 trend was cut the cord and cancel the plan. And in October this year, I actually reported on a Good News Next Week episode called Cord Cutting Winter is Coming, that cord cutting, or basically people canceling their cable TV, is happening even faster than they thought it would. So I'll take that as like a moderately successful prediction. But Corbett Report's prediction trend for 2017 was rise of the robots, and I have to say, you nailed it. You maybe only forgot to mention sex robots last year, but you more than made up for that very recently. And so since, James, I went first last year, you get the honors this year. What is your story for 2017? All right. Well, as you say, my prediction was for Rise of the Robots, as we called it, but it was more generally about technocracy, 2017 being the year of the unveiling of technocracy, or at least this sort of public face of technocracy. And uh, unfortunately, very unfortunately for all of us, I think, yes, I did nail it in that regard. And so first of all, I mean, before I get into my story of the year, let me just say that for runners-up and um, other things that I was thinking about, I will direct people to an excellent article that just came out from Matt Agarist on the Free Thought Project, Top 10 Conspiracy Theories That Turned Fact in 2017, that does a great job of going through some of the stories that you've probably forgotten and some that you may not have seen at all over the course of the past year that are worth Look, think, looking back at and thinking about um, as we move into 2018. But for my story of the year, I'm going to be picking up on my prediction from last year, the rise of the robots, the technocracy, and say that I was originally planning that my story of the year was going to be Meet Sophia, the first ever robot citizen, a citizen of Saudi Arabia. I thought that that story perfectly encapsulated so many things about what I've been thinking about over the course of the past year and what I was anticipating, I suppose, at the end of last year, which was the normalization of robots, the uh, the transhumanist uh, agenda, the techno technocratic agenda, um, all of the things that come along with this, including the sex robots and the disintegration of the family unit, and also the, uh, the idea of taxing robots and robot workers and automation. All of these stories all swirl around together and are a pretty unhappy picture, and I think they're perfectly encapsulated in that moment earlier this year when Sophia the Robot became a citizen of Saudi Arabia. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change course a little bit. Just in the past couple of hours, I saw a story that I think perhaps even better touches on this. So I'm going to make this the story of 2017 <laughs> at the very, 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 very last moment. It is from the Daily Fail. The robot that knows when you're lying. Scientists create an AI that can detect deception in the courtroom, and it's already significantly better than humans. Ooh boy, dissecting this propaganda is uh, just, um, it, well, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. So this is basically a propaganda piece for the type of scam tech that is going to be rolled out, the uh, polygraph detector, lie detector of the future, which is going to be these lie detecting robots or lie detecting AI algorithms or whatever they're going to sell them as. And the more you pick apart at this story, the more you realize it is a pack of lies on every level. So there is an actual um, paper that was published in arvix.org, Deception Detection in Videos, um, from these researchers at the University of Maryland and Dartmouth College, talking about their new algorithm that they programmed, uh, basically a computer to look at video footage of people speaking and look at certain micro expressions like eyebrow raising and frowning and determining whether or not the person is lying or telling the truth. And they tested this out in 15 different courtroom videos and they were, you know, 92% accurate or whatever it was, slightly more accurate than humans doing the same thing. So they said, you know, hey, success of some sort. And so, of course, the Daily Fail takes this and blows it into this story about AI detecting lies, and they're going to they're gonna know all about what you're really thinking and all of this, which is overblown in so many senses. First of all, this has nothing to do with artificial intelligence, which is something I've pointed out a few times this year. The AI is being sold to us, and it's being marketed, and it's being pushed 
even when it truly has nothing whatsoever to do with what's happening here. There's no artificial intelligence involved. They programmed an algorithm to look for certain features and to deter and to correlate that with lying or telling the truth. The, there's no in artificial or independent automated intelligence going on here of any sort. The second thing that's worrying about this is the underlying principle that whatever data the researchers are feeding in is what this this computer program is using to make its determinations. So if there is someone on the planet whose eyebrows raise when they're not lying, well, then the computer's not going to be able to accurately predict whether or not that person is lying, are they? And this is just a perfect encapsulation of the dangers as we move ahead. As these things are sold to us as AI can do this and it's better than humans and it will know everything and it tells all. But the data that goes into training these algorithms will be what predicts what comes out. Garbage in, garbage out. If micro-expressions is quack science, then what comes out on the other side will be quack science as well. It will be computers just basically that will be trained to say you're lying even if you're not lying. And again, think who is ultimately in control of the system. The programmers are ultimately in control and they can program an algorithm that will will tell the court that you're lying in court when you're telling the truth or you're telling the truth when you're lying. And guess who runs that system? So this is to me an encapsulation of so many of these different types of stories. It's all about the techno technocratic world we're living in, increasingly so. And um, again, Unfortunately, I think I did, really did uh, nail it with my prediction for this year. So I'll throw in the link to that particular um, paper so you can actually read the paper rather than just the Daily Fail article. Um, I'll also throw in a link to the uh, website itself of the D.A.R.E. project where you can watch the videos that they use to test the algorithm and the GitHub um, uh, page where you can actually look at the, uh, the code that they were using. So... It's not fun stuff, but uh, unfortunately, I think this is a sign of the uh, year that was. And it and it and it wasn't the advent of World War Three that made you kind of slightly alter your your year end story, as as you noted last week. So sort of more human than human, and we've talked about the bite mark science in courtrooms. We've talked, of course, about the behavioral detection officers, you know, in the airport. So basically. As great as those things are, yeah, let's replace those with, with computerized systems. Plus, James, in maybe a fun way, as we often say, we laugh to not cry. That also kind of sounds like Back to the Future too, where they note that the justice system moves swiftly after they abolish all the lawyers. So we're only maybe two, two, three years off on that. James, I think for my story of 2017, obviously, Weinstein Gate, Pedo Gate, and I think the ever-exploding open secret, I think will continue to kind of have a huge effect on things. I don't think it's going to be kind of a picture that just hangs on the wall as 2017. And that was my prediction going into actually 2015. Full disclosure and the further exposure of the so-called elite. Now, James, I'll make a few other references in this episode to, to wagering. If I had to wager, I would have said your story for 2017 would be that cryptocurrencies went prime time this year. And I kind of thought about that myself. Everything from Whopper coin to Bitcoin becoming household buzzwords. And I talked a lot about a tulip mania, tulipomania in early 2017, which kind of connects back to my 2016 story of the madness of crowds. But then it hit me, dude. Something happened in America that they said would bring about human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria, but it hasn't. And it's only created less crime, more jobs and happier people. And that's just for starters. You know what I'm talking about. It's reefer madness, 2017 style. So there's recreational and medical, both in Alaska, California, Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington state. Plus, there's the District of Columbia, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands that have kind of varying degrees of restriction, and even a blessed few with decriminalization laws. So sales of legal cannabis in North America growing even faster than those darn trusted experts predicted they would. Legal marijuana sales to hit $10 billion in 2017, and a billion of that is just Colorado's. And maybe most kind of important to me, even my home state of West Virginia now has medical marijuana. I've made references oftentimes to seeing that veteran protesting in the capital of West Virginia. Sh shirt and sign that says, don't thank me. 
legalize it. Let me use the medicine I want. So there's now medical marijuana in West Virginia, but they also started industrial hemp growing, which I think started appropriately enough on the 4th of July this year in 2017. So I kind of see maybe my my later years running a bud and breakfast back at my family house in West Virginia, and I'm not really even joking, James. I know people who have left alternative media to pretty much start and help run cannabis companies. I think that's the real get rich scheme that's happening in America. And of course, there are those that say this is just another way for the state to control you and they're drugging you down and dumbing you down or it's going to be Monsanto weed. And those are all completely valid points for discussion. But I think at the very, very, very least, if it gets people out of the run for profit prisons where you really learn how to be a criminal, I think it's worth it. Even if there's a 20% tax on it, it pains me to say it's worth it. And there's still always the black market. Black market is the best market. So the, I think the very nature of cannabis kind of resists control. That's why they call it weed. It grows a lot. It loves to grow. And I want to see Johnny Hempel seeds all around America throwing seeds because the CBD toothpaste is out of the tube. James, that's my story for 2017. Your thoughts on the new weed world order? You can comment on that and then roll right into your 2018 trend. Well, a, uh, a significantly happier story than my story, so <laughs> <laughs> a nice balance there. Um, yeah, and uh, just to bring the downer to it, uh, how does this story relate or not relate or correlate or not correlate to the rise of the opi opioid crisis? Isn't that interesting? They seem to be almost at the same time kind of battling for supremacy. And interestingly enough, yeah, I mean, where has the opioid crisis hit the worst? It's hit the worst in states like West Virginia. So hopefully there can be the pushback. And again, the pushback is going to come in the form of state run controls that dispense the sort of state run, state grown cannabis. And there is going to be that angle to it. But again, you know, when you have people like Pat Robertson, you know, basically saying I can't even as a Christian keep people from something that they say helps them. So yeah, those two, I mean, the big pharma and big cannabis are probably heading for some sort of collision. And I hope that's probably not going to be in 2018. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's where my mind goes with this. Cause it's interesting to see those things both coming together and you know, there's, there's definitely a, a some sort of conflict there. Anyway, well, that'll be something to keep our eye on in 2018 anyway. <laughs> so um, speaking of keeping our eye on 2018, my trend for the year I'm going to call uh, the weaponization of social media. And what I mean by this, obviously social media itself is a weapon, which was revealed earlier that, well, yeah, revealed, was confirmed earlier this year by no less a personage than Sean Parker, played by uh, uh, Justin Timberlake back in the social network, right? for the media monarchy heads out there. Um, um, but uh, Sean Parker, the founding president of Facebook, who came out earlier this year and said um, Facebook was deliberately engineered to basically rewire your brain and it's working and it's horrific and I wouldn't let my children go near this and, you know, what have we done kind of thing. It's, uh, I'll throw in the link to that article. So, yeah, we know social media itself is actually a contagion that has been let loose upon the world. But what I mean by this is something more insidious even. It's the, uh, I think we now see, although again, I, I don't think this is necessarily new, but it's definitely coming into view now, the ideas that the intelligence agencies are going to be actively, actively using social media and quasi-alternative and independent media to as outlets to spread stories that at the very least FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, on various things and to keep people chasing tales and keep people moving in uh, meaningless circles. And I think a good example of that phenomenon, I think it goes back further and I probably will do some more work fleshing this out and tracing the history of this. But a good example of that quite recently was this QAnon thing that's going on in certain conspiracy circles. Some people may have been following this, which um, I, I think is a LARP. But even if you truly believe 100%. This is an insider with this super secret information that they're letting out in this meaningless drivel of open-ended questions that could mean a million different things depending how you interpret them. Um, even if you believe in this QAnon nonsense, uh, do you not think the intelligence agencies are looking at this and going, 
hey, anonymous posts on 4chan are now being dissected and talked about and discussed in conspiracy circles. We can keep these guys chasing tails forever by dropping a little seed here, a little thing there. We'll plant something over there. Maybe we'll we'll throw in a little bit of truth here and there so that people, you know, don't don't lose interest entirely. But we'll just keep people talking about the, whatever we want them to talk about. We will weaponize this information and make sure that to contain them in little circles. I think that is... At the very least, again, even if you believe in QAnon and all of that kind of stuff, it, clearly the intelligence agencies are looking at this and licking their chops and thinking about the things that they can do. And so you have, you know, the the Trumpers are all excited about, oh, you know, Saudi Arabia, yay, Ooh, they're taking care of those, those evil princes and all of that. It's the good guys that are doing this purge and that kind of stuff. They can make, they can spin it any way they want by just implying, oh, you guys don't know, you're seeing only the top level, but underneath, they're really going after the bad guys. Trust us. Keep, keep voting for change, guys. Just keep in that, that, uh, that hamster wheel. So I think this is a perfect way for them to keep, even the people who have escaped to the cage of the mainstream media and gone into, oh, look over here, oh, and 4chan and stuff. People are talking, oh, this is crazy. Oh, wow, conspiracy. And just get them involved in a different hamster wheel. I think this is the way things are going. So, um, again, not a very hopeful trend for the year, but definitely one that's going to be more and more important as we go forward and why people need to spend more and more time critically analyzing the information they're receiving and questioning the sources from which they are receiving them. And word to the wise, anonymous posts on 4chan or whatever that are just open-ended questions are probably not the way you're going to arrive at uh, bedrock truth about the world. Well, that's like the old famous saying, if they can get you asking the wrong questions, they don't care what the answers are. They don't matter. So, James, we've kind of talked about this before in the past. I mean, it's it's I, I've often said mainstream culture ate conspiracy culture and they're kind of selling it back to us. And I kind of come at that from sort of the corporate and the kind of the media angle. But I think it works the same way that you're talking about it from the intelligence federal and, of course, black budget kind of angle. Is this even the bits of the sort of cognitive infiltration that's been talked about in the past? Those seeds have been sowed many, many years in the past under previous puppet presidents. But now, of course, it's probably probably going to bear some fruit in 2018. James, back in May of 2008, I posted a political cartoon by David Horsey, longtime political cartoonist. It shows a family camping out. Yes, kids, 10 years ago, we were freaked out if a politician didn't wear a flag lapel pin and fearful of swarthy strangers boarding airplanes. Nobody was worrying about the country's $48 trillion debt. And the kid says, was that back when people lived in houses? And you see that the family is camping in their minivan that's up on blocks. So I could argue I already made my prediction for 2018 with the help of David Horsey's cartoon back in 2008, because I, I think it's already there. It's, I see it down here in Portland. It's already kind of come true. And that is an interesting thing that I wasn't even necessarily thinking about in preparing this talk. The interesting confluence of things happening just right here in Portland, that on one hand, it's this explosion of freedom. And then on the other hand, a complete destruction of a lot of communities. And it's what's basically been called priced out with a lot of people just sort of leaving the city in droves, as has happened in cities like San Francisco. So there is that America 2018. Maybe we could put those people to work in sort of the weed world and they could earn their wages in the form of pot coin. Or, or maybe that's just some crazy conspiracy theory about a world currency in 2018, as was predictively programmed by The Economist magazine in January of 1988. So I would not be surprised to see any of those things coming. So either way, further economic collapse by design or the coming one world currency blank coin, it's a pretty safe bet that it's going to be bad news for 2018. But as was noted earlier, I don't really like safe bets. That's why I'm renewing my wishful thinking prediction from years past, and that is for a DIY revolution. I've got a friend who's always shown me his latest forays into maker culture with raspberry pies and Arduinos and all kinds of stuff I barely grasp, all kinds of do-it-yourself inventions. He just excitedly told me last night he's finally getting a 3D printer soon. 
that's not to mention things that I'm really excited about, like shortwave and ham radio that I'm excited to kind of get more into in the coming year, as I think we probably have a, a move and a relocation coming up in 2018. You know, just like we were joking last week, my books and vinyl records don't snitch on me and blame me and make fun of me like Netflix and Spotify do. That's why cassette tapes are back. People want real world things that they can hold in their hand. I think. I feel like they can kind of push all the virtual reality, augmented reality, ready player one, call it what they want. But until they actually do destroy the world and we're just riding around on the snow piercer train until the end comes, I think people want real things in their life. So that's my 2018 kind of hopeful prediction. More physical things, physical fun, exercise, getting out, doing stuff, taking guitar lessons, making the arts and crafts, knitting, quilting, sewing machines. I used to sew back in high school. I used to love playing board games, card games. Do you have any idea how popular Cards Against Humanity is? There are quiz bowls and trivia nights pretty much every night here in the city. There are even some speakeasies, too. I see people making more dinners at home with their friends and family. 2018 is going to bring the very predictable selection surge here in the states where the Democrats are going to claim some seats back and it's going to be a big repudiation of America's next top president and blah, blah, blah. But I like to think and I'd like to bet that a lot of people aren't really going to have the stomach to kind of go through that again and keep playing the, the Patriot games. So that's my hopeful prediction for 2018. Another do it yourself revolution. James, I'm going to include the links to all of our previous year end episodes like this and because I'm pretty proud of them. I think they hold up. And I'm also pretty proud that for 332 episodes and eight plus years and counting, you and I have made some pretty damn good non-commercial media. And I thank you, my friends. And I thank you. And I thank more, especially all the listeners out there. And my hat's off to you for another aspirational prediction and <laughs> doing the same prediction until you get it. <laughs> that's the best way to bring something to reality. So <laughs> my hat's off to you for that. And uh, that's a note, I think, to all the people out there who are involved in the DIY and the maker culture and all of that, the low-tech revolution, that James Evan Pilato has just told you he's looking for these types of stories. You can get some feature in Media Monarchy if you're doing this kind of stuff. So there you go. That's great. And uh, I, too, am looking forward to that. Uh, I think we need to reconnect with low-tech and real community and maker culture and all of these things that are the way forward, not the uh, the consumerist culture that we are inundated with. So with, with, so with. So in the media that uh, hopefully will shine a light on some of these issues in the coming year. Um, thank you again for another incredible year of incredible stories and uh, not all of them happy but at any rate all of them uh, vital that we understand and parse and thank you as i say to all the listeners and viewers out there that make this possible in every way that you do um, not just the moral support uh, not just the monetary support but sending your uh, stories and your ideas um, always all of the information very helpful and i do appreciate it thank you